All right, hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the sliding window algorithm. So the sliding window algorithm. And this is a useful algorithm to have on your mind anytime that you're dealing with a sub, sub list of an underlying collection, a substring, a subarray, a subsequence. And basically how we're going to do this is by introducing a problem talking about how we'd solve that problem non-programmatically, going over then, secondly, going over the general approach of the sliding window algorithm, then third, applying it, applying the technique in a py Python context. So the first thing is going over the problem. So the problem is going to be length of longest increasing. So let's say we have some array or list. Some of you may think that this is an array, and you'd be right, and, and Python lists are just dynamic arrays. But let's say that we wanted to find the length of, of the longest increasing, 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 continuous, continuous subsequence of an array. So the terms here mean increasing so that if we look at this we want to say okay what's the length of the longest increasing so that uh, a subsequence just means something a subdivision anything subdivided within this array now we want to say increasing just means from left to right as you read from left to right each in, in, each element is increasing is more than the next and continuous continuous just means that we can't hop around from one to, to two to seven we have to stay just one element next to the next to one another. So how we'd solve this non-programmatically is looking and saying, okay, well, I'm kind of negotiating between two two increasing continuous subsequences of my array. I'm negotiating between the subsequence one, two, three, and the subsequence two, seven. And the reason is because in each of these subdivisions of my array, the elements are continuous, and each element, right, from left to right, we are increasing, but in three to two, we have a decrease so that that is disallowed we could not have a that would be decreasing so we return the longer one so this is three elements long this is two elements because this is longer we return three okay so now that we have a handle on the problem let's go over how we do this algorithmically using the sliding window approach and the main uh, advantage of this is that we are offering up a solution in linear time whereas we're familiar that generating all substrings of a string could be done in quadratic time with a nested loop but here we're we're offering offering to you a o of n solution so i'm going to consistently draw our one of our components that we're going to use to understand the the anchor in red this looks more like a a a mustache with a lollipop. We're going to start by defining two variables, the anchor, which I'll show in red, and then our result, which will be initialized at zero. And then we have, let me just redraw our sequence, sequence making a return, one, two, three, two, seven. And our anchor is also starting at zero down there. And that's our red line. And we're also going to have our last component is going to be our sliding window, which I'll represent in green. The sliding window has a left and a right hand boundary. The left hand boundary could be expressed by the value of anchor. So our window will start as just one and we will expand our window. We will go forth we will traverse our array and expand our window as we keep increasing. So two, you're greater than one. So two can also be a part of our, I'll kind of make this more of like a, a square. Two can be part of our subsequence. And then as the, we are increasing, and as we see three, we also go, well, three, you're greater than two. So you also get to be part of this Nickelodeon green slime ball glob. And during each step of this, during each phase of the process, during each step of this iteration, we are constantly checking. We are constantly checking that the length of our current result. We are constantly setting result to be the greater 
of the of the current result and the length of our current window. So the length of our current window at the start, we have three windows here, right? We have the window one, then we expanded to have the window one, two, then we expanded to have the window one, two, three. So at each stage of the process, whenever we make a window, we're comparing the length of that window with our current result. And we're going, okay, between zero and one, one's greater than between two and one, right? The length of this subsequence, two is greater. And then between one, two, three, and two, well, <laughs> three is so much greater than two, right? So we keep three. And then something kind of magical happens, I would say, you guys should be shaking in your boots. Something is mystical is about to happen to this anchor, right? We, we start to decrease. Our, our condition is now being broken. And how do we deal with that? The left-hand boundary, we want to drag our anchor and chop off this green slime blob to make it stop increasing. So the return, the glorious return of mustache lollipop as our anchor gets reset to the value at our current index, which is three, right? Two has the index value three because Python is zero index. We go zero, one, two, three. The element two in our list has value three. So because of that, if our anchor is just our left-hand boundary, as we set forth once more, as we set sail, our sliding window starts from three. It doesn't include this down here. So now we just have the window two, and then we go seven, you're greater than two, come on in. And at each stage of that iteration, we're also comparing to the length of our current window one with our current result three, and we're saying keep three. Then we compare the length of two seven to our current result, so the length two to three, and we keep three. So we end up returning, we end up, this is our big moment. Well, actually, our big moment, no, no, our big moment was earlier with the anchor being moved. This is a cool moment at least. We end up returning three. So now let's talk about how we would do this in Python. So you might be wondering, well, how do we express the size of our current window? And that'd be a good question. Let's start writing our function. So I'm going to define our function. And in our function names, you want to be incredibly descriptive, such that somebody reading your code would be able to tell what your function does and performs. Uh, but since I'm on limited real estate, I mean, I don't have all the space in the world here, people. I'm just going to call it f. We all know we all know what the ambition of this function is. And we're going to say that takes in a list data class and uh, spits out spits out an integer. So this is arrow-based notation for the curious. And we start by setting a result in anchor to zero. So I'm going to use a chain-based assignment operator. That's just fancy term for result equals anchor equals. And those are going to start at zero. Then we're going to loop through our array. We know that uh, we're going to offer a linear solution. So we're going to loop through one, two, three, two, seven, and that is a linear solution. But the question is, do we want to use an element-based loop or an index-based loop? So when you're dealing with a sequence type and you're writing an iterator, you can either choose to iterate through the elements of L for I in L, or you can choose to do the indices, which would be if you have some sequence type iterator, some iterable object, you're now electing to do the range length of that of that sequence type as opposed to uh, just, just the element-based looping. And in this case, you may point out, well, this 3 is an index, right? So since 3 is an index, we're probably going to use index-based looping. So I'm going to write 4i in not L, but the range length of L. I'm going to close out my parentheses. So this is our O of n loop. So each time we want to do two things. We're going to start off, there's two, two chunks of code. The first is going to be the anchor moving acrobatics, which is going to be an if statement. And I'm not going to write it yet. It's just, you know, acrobatics. Nobody wants to start with acrobatics. We want to stretch our muscles. And we're going to do that by just doing this comparison, where we're comparing the current length of our window, the current size of our sliding window, to our result variable and setting our result variable to be the greater of the two. So result is going to be set to the greater of the two. So the greater of the two, the maximum of the two of our current results, the maximum of our current results, and the current size of our window 
which I'll call um, window W L L N. So what is the current size of our window? So we described anchor as the left hand boundary of our box and boundaries are useful here because if you imagine a number line, like if you imagine the number line 0, 1, 2, 3, if this is just some number line and our sliding window is some object in this number line, like maybe it's this box here, if I asked you to find me the length of this box, you can say, well, it's just the right hand boundary 2 minus the left hand boundary 1. So the length of our box would be 1 here. This would be called the right hand boundary and this would be called the left hand boundary. Here our number line is just our indices, our left hand boundary is our anchor, and the right hand boundary is our current index, right? Our current index is our right hand boundary. When we're creating these boxes, our current index, well, the current index plus one, that's a little spoiler alert, is going to be the right hand boundary of our box. And if we subtract anchor from that, we get the length of our current window, right? Our current window size. So we get our current index, right? Our right hand boundary minus our left hand boundary. But check this out. We do plus one, and why is that? Well, if we're at index zero and our anchor starts at zero, assuredly the subsequence of one, right? The subsequence one, the subsequence one, the length of this, the length of this is not zero. So the, the reason why this is this would give us zero is because if our index is zero and our anchor is zero, then we'd say that we are tantamount, that's, a t that's a, the same thing as saying the length of this is zero, which is not true, so we add one because we're dealing with indices. Now we can venture forth once more onto the breach to do the complicated conditional expression if. So this is our anchor being dragged. This is our mustache lollipop. This is controlling our mustache lollipop. And what happens here? So as we're going through our array, one, two, three, two, seven, as we're going through each of these elements, we're constantly peering backwards, right? When we get to two, we constantly peer backwards and ask ourselves, is two greater than one? Then we, as we hit three, we are constantly doing this. We say, is three greater than two? And when we get to two, we realize that is our condition for having a longest, uh, I'm sorry, that's our condition for having an increasing subsequence, right? This is true, two is greater than one. This is true, three is greater than two. And as soon as that becomes false, then we want to trigger our anchor to move to this position. So as soon as the previous value becomes greater than our current value, we want to move our anchor. So as long as our previous value, right, we can use the numerical indexing part of Python, our previous value, when that becomes greater than our current value, that's where we want to move anchor to our current index. But there's a little, there's two things here that we want to be careful of. First is that, well, what if we have a duplicate? What if we have one, two, two? In this case, yeah, two is not greater than two, but this is still not increasing, right? Two equals two, so we want greater, uh, greater than or equal to. Additionally, we want to make sure that Python, uh, that we're not using the negative indexing of Python. So when we're at the zeroth index, we have our previous element equal to L0 minus 1, L numerical index of minus 1. Python supports negative indexing, which means that L of minus 1 is the same, well, that's just the same thing as saying our last element, right? This is our last element. And we don't you know, if we, it, it wouldn't impact our, our answer in this case, but just to, uh, just to be con uh, cognizant of our edge cases, of those, of those grimy edge cases we may forget about, we can add in if i is greater than, a z or uh, is, is greater than zero and the value at our previous index is greater than or equal to our current index, just to make sure that we're covering all of our bases. And this would be, the, so now let's get into using, uh, now let's get into actually coding this out. So let me grab my IDE, my little 
integrated development environment. So I use Atom, and I apologize apologize for the light mode. I you know some some of you may be uh, some of you may be sensitive to light mode. Okay, so now let's get to coding this out. Let's say that we're given some list one two three two seven, and we're going to start by defining our function, which takes in the parameter called parameter L, which is a list, and outputs an integer. And this will take the length of longest increasing continuous subsequence. And that's what this function does. And we'll say that does it via sliding window. And maybe we can make this more blocky just for aesthetics. You know, everybody li likes a good blocky doc string. OK, so we want to take the length of our longest increasing. That's what this function does. We start by initializing result in anchor. I'm going to use chain-based assignment at 0. Then we do an index-based loop range length of our sequence type and take the set the result as the maximum of our current results and the right-hand boundary minus the left-hand boundary plus 1 because we're dealing with indices. And in our if conditional, this is going to outline our anchor being moved to our current index. We know that that happens when we stop increasing. In other words, the value at our previous the value at our previous index is greater than our current index. We want to account for duplicates. So if if we have a repeat number, that means the previous index is equal to our current index. That's also not increasing. And additionally, we're just going to be cognizant of our edge case. And this would this is important if you're in if you're in Java to get to not get an uh, index array out of bounds error in Python it it's just to avoid negative indexing, but we just want to make sure that we're constraining our sliding window to, to be as much as we we uh, imagine it to operate as. Then at the end, we're just going to return our results variable. Now let's compactify this code and run it. So let's say print the results of f of l, and we get maybe we can make this. Uh, we, we could say we could say now that the length of the long the long length of longest increasing continuous subsequence in the in the array l is uh, three. If we have it as repeats, we also get three because we're getting this. And maybe if we just have another edge case, maybe we just have all of the same number. We should get one because it's recognizing all of the duplicates. And yeah, so that w this has been sliding window. Uh, this is what was a an example. And maybe next time I will do the more some more some more complicated examples.